Kelly Shaw. Welcome to Kelly Shaw Ministries Bible Study. Again, we will be in Ruth chapter one. We will continue in Ruth chapter one from last week. We talked about commitment. Our Bible study theme tonight is bitterness. Bitterness. Again, good evening, good evening. Welcome, welcome to, for, welcome to all of you who are gathered in person as well as our virtual audience. Uh, we'll give you a few minutes to come in. Again, welcome to Kelly Shaw's ministry. Bible study, and we will be in Ruth chapter 1. We will be in the bottom part of Ruth chapter 1, beginning in verse, uh, we will be in verse 19. Our primary focus tonight will be verse 19 through 22, and our Bible study theme will be that of bitterness. So again, welcome everyone here. Y'all gonna be quiet on me tonight? <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. And for those of you who are joining us online, welcome, welcome, welcome. Again, I'll give you a few minutes as we turn to Ruth chapter 1. And in doing so, um, I want us to, we'll do a small recap and then we'll move into tonight's lesson. But before we do that, again, welcome again. I hope everybody is having a great week. Thus far, it is um, two. I wanted to say hump day because we're so used to having Bible study on Wednesday, but it's Tuesday instead of hump day. Um, so again, I hope everybody's um, week has been going great. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you once again for this opportunity to come into your presence to study your word. Lord God, it is my prayer that you open every ear to hear, every heart to receive all that it is that you would have for us to receive. And dear God, I will be so careful to give you all the honor, glory, and praise because I recognize that it all belongs to you. Mm -hmm. And so God, in Jesus' name, I pray this prayer. Amen. Amen. Again, we are in Ruth chapter 1. Last week, we talked about, what was that word, the big word with the C? Commitment. Committed, being committed. And we focused our attention on the uh, three women, which one woman's name was Naomi, yeah. and she had two daughter-in-laws, right? Mm -hmm. Their names was Ruth and Orpah. And we talked about this word committed. And we use the example of Orpah and Ruth to show this idea of committed. We mm -hmm. see that Orpah represents partial commitment because she started, she was starting off committed, um, but at the urging of her mother-in-law, well actually both women, Ruth and Naomi, started off together committed, um, but then at the first urging of the mother-in-law, they both resisted the urging. Remember we talked about urging? Mm -hmm. um, there's times in our lives where people will urge us to turn back right. mm -hmm. um, and keep us from moving forward. Mm -hmm. They will talk us out of moving forward. Or some of, we talked about ex external um, urging. Um, let me back up, let me slow down a little. I'm so excited tonight. <laughs> We talked about external urgings, meaning that Ruth, rep, I mean not Ruth, but Naomi represented the external urging because she was urging both women to turn back. But we also talked about internal urgings, those things that we have within us, our desires and um, our appetites that keep us from moving forward in the things of God or moving forward in, on this Christian journey that causes us to perhaps turn back into a life of sin because all three women were leaving this place called Moab, which symbolizes what? It symbolizes a place of, do you remember last week? It, remember, it symbolizes a place of sin. Yeah. And so, again, both women started off right. They were both committed. Um, the first urging, they would, both of them resisted the urging to turn back. But then at the second urging, Oprah, or, Orpah decided to turn back. Ruth decided to move forward. So what we have is we have a partial commitment that represents Orpah where we start off, but then something in our lives or something this urging or this desire causes us to turn back or to quit or to throw in the towel. But then we have the Ruth that represents full commitment. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. She resisted three different urgings mm -hmm. of Naomi. She resisted to the point to where now they are now moving forward mm -hmm. to Bethlehem. Yeah. And so that is our recap from last week. So we do understand this idea of 
commitment. Mm -hmm. What partial commitment looks like and what fully committed look like. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. All right, great, 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 great. What about my online people? Are y'all with me? We're with me. Give me the thumbs up if you're with me, right? All right, all right, good, good, good. And so tonight I want to talk about, we're going to talk from the subject of bitterness, mm -hmm. bitterness. And we're going to use the case study tonight of that of Naomi. Mm -hmm. And so here, to give you some back, to give you the background on Naomi again, we talked about, we briefly talked about kind of the things that went, that happened in their lives last week but in order for us to understand this idea of bitterness that um is going on with naomi we must first ask the question what happened what brought her to a place of bitterness now why do i say she's bitter because the text tells us that you know she feels like her life is bitter mm -hmm. and then as we move down to the bottom half of uh, the bottom portion of this text we even see that she no longer wants to be known as Naomi. She wants yeah. to be known as Mara, which Naomi means pleasant and uh, Mara means bitterness. Mm -hmm. And so what has happened? What we can see in the text as we look at the top part of chapter one, we see that Naomi has experienced multiple losses. She lost her, there was the death of her husband and then there's the death of both of her children, her sons rather, okay? So she's experienced multiple losses. And so now we're, we're, we're at, when we're here in the text, after she experiences these losses, she is now in a season, if you will, of grief because that comes with um, when you lose somebody, right? Anytime that you're experiencing the death of something, there's this, idea of grief that is attached to it, right? And it's not just with the, the loss or the death of, a physical death of someone. It could be the death of a relationship, a marriage. It can be a, the death of a job, a career. It can be the death of multiple things, your position, your, maybe they phased out your position at, on your job, right? Mm -hmm. And so here we see that she, she has experienced multiple deaths. It's one thing to have your husband to die, right? Yeah. That was the first thing that happened to her. Here, well, here she is. Again, how she ended up in Moab, it was her husband that took her and her sons to Moab because there was a famine in her native land of Judah, Bethlehem, Judah. Right. And so her husband, because of the famine, her husband takes her to this foreign land called Moab, they get there and after some time, her husband dies. But in ancient time, when a husband died and the wife or the widow had sons, it was the son's responsibility to care for the mother. And so although the, the husband died, she still had two sons that she could fall back on mm -hmm. for care. But then, you know, she's experienced that death, so she's going through that grieving process. But then next, she finds that she's loose. She's now lost both of her sons. And the text doesn't say, you know, how far apart these deaths was. But within a 10-year span, she has lost her husband and her two sons, which not only that, to add salt to injury. Is that how you use that term? Yeah. She loses all her kids. She doesn't have any more kids. So everything she's known is now gone. And so upon this death, upon this loss, these multiple loss, here she finds herself in this bitter circumstance of, again, she talks about at the bottom of chapter one, she talks about on her return to Bethlehem, she talks about how she went, she came out full. She went away full, meaning that when she went to Moab, she had her husband, she had her sons, right? Mm -hmm. She had it going on, if you will. Everything was intact, but now upon her return, she says, okay, I went out 
full, but now I'm coming back empty. Does that sound like some of our lives where there has maybe you, maybe me, or, or many of us have experienced multiple losses? Maybe not multiple losses where we lost uh, family member after family member after family member, but some of us could have. But also there's many ways that we can um, suffer with loss. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was a family member. And then maybe after that, it was your job. Or maybe after that, it was your car. Mm -hmm. But again, life has really, really hit this woman and to the point to where she is experiencing this grief, this bitterness. Again, she's experiencing bitter circumstances. Are you with me? Anybody have any questions? My online folks, are you with me? Any questions? Any comments? We're good? We're good. Okay, good. And so, here, let's talk about that, what Naomi, let's talk about, let's just kind of unpack this idea of bitterness. So, before we move down to the lower part of chapter one, let's go back, let's circle back to when she was urging her daughter-in-law's to turn back. And let's start in verse 13, where she is telling them, this is when they both are still trying to go with her. And she's telling him, she's basically urging him, trying to encourage them to turn back. And she says here at the um, end of 13, she said, it is more bitter for me than for you because the Lord's hand has turned against me. Can we park right there for a second? Mm -hmm. She says, it is more bitter. This is her telling her two daughter-in-laws. She's giving them these reasons for not wanting to go with her. She's giving them these reasons to not go with her, not to, to so they won't accompany her back to Bethlehem. She says, after she tells them about, you know, it's possible that they won't be able to remarry if they stick with her because, you know, she's older. She's not gonna, she, uh, the likeliness of her having more sons is slim to none. And then at the end of 13, she talks about, it is more bitter for me than you because the Lord's hand has turned against me. Mm -hmm. And so here she is pointing at the reason why she feels like her life is so bitter. She feels that the author of her circumstances being as what they are is because of the Lord's hand. And so before we judge Naomi, how many times have we experienced loss in our lives or dealt with some bitter circumstances or have been dealt a bad hand in life? And the one that we point to is God did this, right? God's hand is against me. Because a lot of times what we think is we think that if bad things happen to us, it has to be because God did this to me or God, you know, orchestrated this to happen in my life. But let's, let's set aside God. Anytime that anything happens in our lives, notice that we have, we always tend to have to find someone or something to blame. If your life didn't turn out right, oh, it's because my mom wasn't there or my dad was there or my mom was on drugs. The reason why my life is out of control is because my mom, if my mama wouldn't have been on drugs, I would have turned out all right. You know, we have, or either if, you know, a situation doesn't work out within relationships, we blame one another. Oh, it was her fault or it was his fault. We tend to want to blame. We have, we have this thing where we, we have to blame something. But sometimes there's things in our lives that happen in our lives and there's no, no one to point to. But something within us causes us to want to blame. And so here, with this bitter circumstance that Naomi finds herself in, she says, the first thing that she says is she points to God. She says to them, it's more bitter for me than for you because the Lord's hand has turned against me. Mm -hmm. 
Just because things happen in our life, it does not mean that God's hand is against us. Mm -hmm. I need to say that again mm -hmm. for my online folks. Just because bad things happen to us doesn't necessarily mean that God's hand is against us. Okay? But here she says, his hand is is against us now there's times in our lives where where there is consequences that we must serve because of some of the actions that we have taken in life or sometimes god can if, we're, if we find ourselves outside of god's will again there's consequences for being disobedient but here we don't know that let me do, let me back up. For her to say God's hand is against me, she's basically blaming. She's saying that the reason why this has all happened to me is because God is against me. Mm. Go with me for a little bit. Could it be that she's feeling, perhaps she's feeling like, her ending up in Moab or the family moving to Moab, leaving Bethel, the house of bread, to go to a foreign pagan country, perhaps she's feeling the guilt of leaving where she should have been planted. Uh -huh. But let's go here. She's not the one that took the family there. The husband, well, the lights just went off. What, what's that about? Let's keep going. Check the lights for me. Um, wow. Where was we at, guys? It wasn't Naomi that, you might have to go out and ask them about the lights. It wasn't Naomi that took the family to Moab. And so the husband takes them to Moab, right? The husband dies. Mm -hmm. She's left with the sons. The sons ends up marrying two women of that country, and then they die. So the circumstance that she finds herself in, can we say that it wasn't directly her fault? Uh, Sometimes the decisions of other people <laughs> lead to us I like that word. Places us in different or um, bitter predicaments, right? Well, I was just thinking, <clears throat> did she, maybe she, she said it the wrong way, because she, maybe she, she doesn't have a husband to complain about, mm -hmm. because he's dead, and, mm -hmm. and her sons are dead, so she can't, can't she can't blame a husband. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. We got lights back. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sorry about that. And so, again, we have this thing about us that we have to blame something or somebody. And so here she says, you know, his hand, you know, the Lord's hand is against me. But not only that, she's on her way back home but even though she's on her way back home she's still saying that it's bitter for me. it's going to be bitter for me she's headed in the right direction she's headed home mm -hmm. even if they ended up in the wrong place she suffered some loss and we don't know that they died because they were there because the deaths could have occurred in Bethlehem mm -hmm. And see, that's another thing. A lot of times people think that maybe the deaths happened because they were in the foreign country or the uh, pagan country. Mm -hmm. But the text does not say, tell us directly that that's why that was. Because again, the deaths could have happened anywhere. It could have happened on the road there. It could have happened in Bethlehem. It could have happened anywhere. But the thing about it is she's already talking bad about her future do you see that? She says, it's bitter for me. I don't need, y'all don't need to go with me because it's bitter for me. 
than for you. Meaning that even though she's headed to the house of bread, because remember early um, in this chapter, it talks about how she, after these deaths have occurred, she heard that there was, the Lord was blessing his people in Bethlehem, mm -hmm. the place that she's from. So she's already knowing that the Lord is blessing the people. She's headed back home towards the blessing, yet she's saying it's bitter for me. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when we find ourselves in these bitter circumstances, it's hard for us to see what tomorrow is going to be. Yeah, today might have been a bad day. Yesterday was even worse. But maybe, just maybe, maybe. the tide will change or the Lord will yeah. bless me yeah. Yeah. if I keep moving forward in the right direction. But here, she can't see past what has happened to her. She can't see past her circumstances. So she stepped in this mode of it's bitter. And so she's pushing these women away, these women who she already says, you've already been kind to me. Mm -hmm. You've been kind to my sons and to me. But yet, because my life is bitter, because it's bitter for me, I can't see anything better for me. Mm -hmm. I think you guys will be better off turning away. And sometimes when we're in a season of bitterness, when we've been in this bitterness, bitter circumstance for, when we find ourselves being in a bitter circumstance for a long period of time, sometimes we, that's what we do. Mm -hmm. We push people away. Mm -hmm. We like to isolate ourselves. Right. Mm -hmm. Instead of having the company of those who love her, her daughter-in-law, those who have been kind to her, I'd rather go this road by myself because I'm feeling some type of way. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And maybe bitterness is not what we are going through, some of us is going through. Maybe bitterness is not our thing. Maybe it's anger. Maybe it's depression. And maybe, you know, sometimes when you're depressed or you, you're going through situations or you're angry about something, we don't want, we isolate ourselves. We don't want to be bothered with nobody, especially those who are trying to help. These two women represent people that have tried to help, that has helped her, that wants to help her, but yet she's rejecting the help. Amen. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking about bitterness tonight. We're talking about emotions. You know, maybe, again, maybe yours, your thing is not bitterness. Maybe you're not dealing with bitterness. Maybe you're dealing with anger. But it could be that you are dealing with bitterness but just haven't put your finger on it because you think it's just anger. But what bitterness, bitterness is birthed from anger. Mm -hmm. Bitterness takes root when we are hurt by others or we think a situation that we were in is unjust or unfair. It takes root. Bitter is related to anger and resentment. Anger festers and builds up in our heart. And then next thing you know, bitterness takes root. Mm -hmm. And so here, in this bitter circumstance, she pushing her help away, those who want to help her. She's pushing them away. She's trying to urge them to go back. She wants to go down this road alone. Mm -hmm. And again, before we start judging Miss, Miss Naomi, some of us do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Some of us won't answer the phone because we don't want to be bothered. We want to just tuck ourselves under the covers and just stay in our bitterness because we're angry, we're upset. And many of us don't even really know how to really navigate the space that we're in. And so, again, she doesn't even see, she can't even see past today. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> again, she heard that the Lord was blessing. She's headed in that direction 
yet she's saying I'm bitter. It's bitter, it's bitter for me. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't go with me. But not only that, notice that also, you know, she's, she's wanting to isolate herself. She doesn't see any help. She's also, bitterness also makes her feel like she has nothing yeah. left to offer. Mm -hmm. Nothing left to offer, especially people when we've been stripped of things, when we've had, again, when we, she's had multiple losses. Mm -hmm. She feels like she has nothing to offer. Mm -hmm. Could it be that, here we go, could it be that her identity was in her man? And her, or her kids. And then when that was stripped from her, mm -hmm. she felt like she had nothing else. Mm -hmm. We have to be careful. And I'm not saying that's what it was for her. It could have been. Because she lost her husband. She lost her children. And here she is alone, feeling like she has nothing to offer them. But I would argue she had a lot to offer both women because both women were in a place that was pagan, meaning that they worship false gods. And here she is headed home and the God that she serves, that's something to offer, the one and true living God. So even when we think we're stripped of everything, there is something you still have to offer. Uh, yes. uh -huh. Naomi, you still have something to offer. You have God to offer. Yes. Because who took you up on that is, Ruth said, where you go, I'll go. Yes, where you stay, I'll stay. Your God will be my God. Yes. So she does have something to offer. Mm -hmm. She shouldn't want them to stay in that place mm -hmm. that symbolizes sin. She should want them to come and let me introduce you to my God. Mm -hmm. Come on back home mm -hmm. with me. Mm -hmm. But some of us are so caught up in our circumstances that we fail to even share God. Mm -hmm. But I don't care how much you think you've lost. You still got something. Mm -hmm. okay, you got a testimony mm -hmm. because you may have lost your husband, you may have lost your kids, but you escaped with your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you having your life, the very thing that you, ha you, you, you escaped with your life, that right there is enough to say that you still got purpose. As long as you got air in your body, you still have purpose. It may not feel like it. Yes, suffering, loss, multiple loss, yes, mm -hmm. it hurts, it cuts. And today may look crazy. Yesterday may have looked crazy. Mm -hmm. But we don't know what tomorrow right. may be like. But if you keep on keep living, on. if you keep yeah. on getting up, mm -hmm. and you keep on refusing to slay down and die, when I say that, I mean giving up, pulling mm -hmm. the covers over your head, throwing in the towel. Mm -hmm. Just keep on living. Keep on living. Eventually, it's going to get better. Mm -hmm. And so... She felt like she had nothing to offer. And again, but the wonderful thing that we can see here, the picture that we can see here is, although she's bitter, and although all of that stuff happened to her, mm -hmm. she's headed in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Man. Mm -hmm. That's the blessing right there. Mm -hmm. With her woe is me, <laughs> with her bitter self, mm -hmm. she's headed in the right direction. Yeah. Even though she's blaming God for her circumstance, right. she's headed in the right direction. So we can applaud her tonight because she's moving forward in the right direction. Even though her emotions is not aligning up with it, she's still headed in the right direction. She's headed home. She's not headed away from God. She's headed towards the house of God, right? Amen. And so we can learn a lot here from Naomi. Mm -hmm. She may not have had everything together, but she was headed in the right direction. Are you headed in the right direction? 
Because God's arms is wide open to receive us with our bitter selves, with our crazy selves, with our angry selves, with our hurt selves, our divorce selves, our just got out of jail cell, on my way to jail selves. God's arms is open. All he wants us to do is come home. Move forward towards him. Leave where you were, that place that represents loss, mm -hmm. and move forward. Mm -hmm. Amen. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Are we with? Are y'all with me? We good? You? All right. We good? Mm -hmm. uh, virtual audience, let me know you're with me. Thumbs up, thumbs up. You got any questions? Hmm? Praise God. I hear y'all praising God out there. Who is it, Nene? Who? Miss Kathy, keep on praising God. Keep praising God. So again, we see here that Naomi, she's bitter, but she's moving in the right direction. Oh my God, that is just blessing me tonight. You don't have to be perfect to move in the right direction. A lot of people say, oh, before I can come to Christ, before I can come to the church, I got to get it all together. But here, Naomi don't have it all together. She's upset. She's dealt with some, um, some, uh, some bitter circumstances, but she's moving in the right direction. So tonight, I want us to move in the right direction. We don't have it all together, but we're headed in the right direction. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Oh, Lord, I got to yeah. slow down. I feel like preaching, and this is Bible Go study. Go Ooh, are you headed in the right direction? Stand, all right. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so here she's headed in the right direction. Mm -hmm. She has her daughter-in-law with her. Because the daughter-in-law was ten toes down with her, wasn't she? She said, I'm not taking, not, you're not pushing me away, you're not urging me away, I'm going with you. So as they are entering into Bethlehem, she says, right here, and we're in verse, where are we at? And, and how are we on time? Oh, we're doing good on time. So in verse 19, it says, so the two women went on until they came to Bethlehem. When they arrived in Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because of them. And the women exclaimed, can this be Naomi? Naomi. Uh -huh. And it could be because, you know, it had been over 10 years. Maybe they didn't really recognize her. They hadn't seen her in a while. Or it could be that she aged. Or it could be mm -hmm. that the circumstances that she endured maybe showed on her because sometimes when we've gone through some things it can kind of show on us oh right when you didn't live some when you didn't mm -hmm. live your life or a hard life mm -hmm. yeah. it kind of shows on you so mm -hmm. she's arriving here in bethlehem and when they arrived they are like this the town is stirred because of them and the women exclaim can this be naomi mm -hmm. but notice what naomi's response is she tells them don't call me naomi mm -hmm. Call me Mara. And so Naomi, the name Naomi in the Hebrew means pleasant. And the word Mara in the Hebrew means bitter. So what is taking place here? She says, don't call me Naomi. She told them, call me Mara because the Almighty has made my life not bitter. Not just bitter. Very bitter. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. And then she questions him, why call me Naomi? Mm. Then she goes a little further. She talking, she's talking now. The Lord has afflicted me. The Almighty has brought misfortune upon me. Mm. Let's unpack that. What is happening here? She's saying, my name is... Yeah, y'all know y'all knew me by Naomi, but I'ma change my name to Mara. So what I will submit to you today is this. This bitterness, this bitter circumstance, had consumed her so much so that she defined herself by her circumstances. So much so that she changed her name. Mm. When you change your name to match your circumstances, mm -hmm. 
That means that that thing has consumed you so much that you have taken on that identity. Mm -hmm. Wow. My question for us tonight, what have we changed our names to? Are we Mara? Was we pleasant and now we're bitter? Is our name anger? Is our name resentment because of what life has dealt us? The hand that life has dealt us? The trials and tribulations that we have been through, gone through? Death is going to come to all of us. That's facts. One day, you're going to lose your mama. You're going to lose your, your kids. Mm -hmm. You're going to lose your father. One day. That's facts. Mm -hmm. And it's going to happen to all of us. Right. All of us is going to experience some type of physical death mm -hmm. with a relative, a close friend, church members, pastors, all of that. But are we going to allow those circumstances, whether we suffer the loss where a physical loss, somebody died, or the loss of a job, the loss of a relationship, the loss of property, maybe you, you had the, your house got foreclosed on, maybe you got scammed, maybe the repo people then picked your car up or they looking for it and you got it parked down the street somewhere tucked. But they crafty now. They got GPSs now. They can find your stuff. So you better take all your stuff out your car, put it in the house before they get you. And I'm not wishing that on anybody, just some wisdom. But we can't allow life circumstances, negative circumstances, to define who we are. We cannot be so consumed in it that we become that. She told them, don't call me. Naomi, who God designed and called me to be. Mm -hmm. I'm going to come up with another name because I'm identifying with my circumstance. Call me Mara because I'm bitter. I'm grieving. I done lost my husband. I done lost my sons. I went away full. I had it going on. I'm coming back. I ain't got nothing. No hope. No hope that things was going to change for her. Not to mention that they're coming during barley harvest. She's coming back. She's returning during a season of blessing. But she doesn't recognize it because she's so consumed with her circumstances, with the bitterness, that she can't even see that she's walking into a blessed a harvesting season. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem with many of us. We're so consumed with our life and how it's taken a turn for the worse or or we've been dealt a bad hand and you know the the the, the you know we always talking about who got their foot on my neck. I can't get up, I can't get a job, I can't do this, I've lost this, I lost that that we can't even see that God is leading us on a road to bless us. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. And so we have defined ourselves by the circumstances. We define ourselves by the loss. Mm -hmm. If I don't have all of this, then I have nothing. But we all have something. We have the Lord Amen. who, no, it's this Christian journey. It's not always going to be, like I said last week, it's not always going to be easy, mm -hmm. but it is beneficial yeah. because you can try to do this without God or with God. You pick. It, you can bear it a little bit better when you have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of, with you, inside of you. You have God leading and your Holy Spirit leading and guiding you. Mm -hmm. Again, are we going to 
be so consumed. We have to be careful. We're, we have to be careful to not rename ourselves. We are not defined by that divorce. You are not defined by the divorce. You are not defined by uh, that addiction. That's what you did. That's not who you are. You're not defined by that long record you have of, of um, crime. That might be what you did, but it does not define who you are. Mm -hmm. It doesn't change. Naomi, it doesn't change who she is. What she did, it doesn't change who she is. It changed who, how she saw herself. See the wheels turning. Do we have any questions out there in the virtual land? We good? We good? We good? Good, good, good. So again, she changed her name. She changed it. So not only did she change it where that's what she believed, but notice she told them. It's one thing, okay, that's bad enough when we convince ourselves that we're the, when we define ourselves by our circumstances. Mm -hmm. But she also mm -hmm. went a step further and said, that's how I want you to know me. Oh, right? Oh, mm -hmm. She could have just left it with, you know, that's how I feel about me. But now I, I don't, I don't want to just feel like this. I want you, 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 all oh, these different, you, 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 you. I want all of y'all to feel the same way that I do. She told him, don't call me that. Here's my new name. Mark. Wow, that's interesting, isn't it? And then she goes on again. She says, I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi? Also, she identified herself with, I guess in the beginning, it looks like in the beginning she identified herself, you know, she, she was defined by what she had. Remember I talked about, could it be that she had her, her whole identity because she's talking about, I was full, now I'm empty. Yeah. Could it be that her whole identity was in her husband, and her kids. Yeah. And we have to be careful with that mm -hmm. because when we put our all into someone else, mm -hmm. when they're stripped from us or when they leave, that's why we feel like we fall on the part because they was our everything. That's the that's the word that I was looking at. When we didn't put when we didn't made somebody our everything, mm -hmm. when that is taken from us mm -hmm. or when they leave us, that's why we feel like we can't go on because they were our everything. Let me tell you, the only one that should be our everything is God. Amen. Jesus Christ should be your everything because he is consistent. He's constant. He's faithful. He doesn't abandon us. He's going to be there. People are fickle. They say they love you one minute. Amen. Next thing you know, they go on with somebody else the next minute. You better be careful putting everything, putting, uh, making somebody your everything. Yes. The only thing that should be your everything. And I'm one that can testify. I didn't put my, I didn't make other people my everything. Mm -hmm. And I didn't suffered a lot of heartbreak behind making somebody my everything. And that's not just with a relationship between a man and a woman. That's also when you didn't put, you think your mama is everything. And I love my mama. I love my mama, but my mama is not my everything. If the Lord was to take her on home today, yes, I'll be hurt. Yes, there'll be tears. But at the end of the day, I know who my everything is, and that is God. Amen. That might upset some people, but I know that I'm telling the truth. I know that I'm telling the truth. And so here we think we're, when we're talking about this bitterness, we see Naomi who changed her name because she had defined herself by her circumstance. Mm. But what Naomi didn't recognize at this juncture in her life, number one, 
she didn't recognize what was on the other side of this chapter. Mm -hmm. Because when you move on through these chapters, you will see that Naomi ended up being blessed. But sometimes we cannot see because we're looking through the lens of our circumstances. We're looking through the lens of bitterness where we can't see beyond today. Mm -hmm. And so for anybody that is struggling with bitterness, resentment, anger or whatever, where you're feeling like you don't have nothing to offer, you don't have nothing, uh, nothing left, keep moving in the right direction. You keep moving towards God because there's a harvest at the end of this process. Keep moving forward. You keep waking up. You keep getting up. You keep, you kick them covers off. You take them covers off your head and you keep showing up day by day. I promise you it will get better. Keep moving in the right direction. Keep head, keep headed towards God. Yes, you may still experience the feelings of bitterness. You may still be angry, but just like Naomi, even though she was bitter, even though she felt like she had nothing to offer, she was still headed in the right direction. And so that concludes our Bible study tonight. I pray that you was blessed as I was blessed with teaching that. Do anybody have any questions, concerns?